602, let's kick it off. Uh, Amy is down in Texas. Uh, I thought first she was going to be at the Oscars, but that's not true. That was a rumor that was just sweeping through uh, Stockbridge because Justin, you should know that because you've got all this uh, playwright and talent and acting and everything else. But no, she was down in Texas on a business trip. So we're here. Um, adjustments to the agenda. I have a suggestion um, that we postpone our discussion and action on two mission statements, a, uh, a revised draft of our RSUD mission statement. And thank you, Justine. It's um, it really did a great job on that. Um, and also we've got a proposed um, mission statement for our endowments. And uh, again, these are not time critical, but it's important to wrap our heads around why we're here. And uh, so those are very important things, but I think if it's okay with the, the, the quorum, we could postpone those to our April meeting. Is there any um, discussion uh, problem with that suggestion at all? And please speak up. I have, I don't take things personally at my old age. Uh, are we okay with that? Yeah. Yep, I'm yeah. fine with it. Robert? I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, any other adjustments to the agenda? Yeah, I know I'm a rookie here because uh, Amy usually boards us. For, it's my intention that we'll hopefully um, adjourn on or before eight o'clock so we can get home. Um, consent agenda, approval of the minutes of Monday, February 5th. And you've got those in front of you with all the actions in bold, which I kind of like. Um, do I hear anybody want to? move these a minute along or have any I move. Uh, thank you any second for that okay move the second to consent agenda for the minutes of february 5th we all sat with that all in favor say aye 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 thank you thank you okay we have public comment is there a member of the public here that wishes to speak Okay, um, the public is always invited and welcome, and thank you for being here. Uh, agenda item six, celebration of learning. Are we ready to do it now? We can. Wow. Are we gonna do snow angels in the field? Is that? Uh, if you would like to, you're more than welcome. I had recess duty today, so I got to go outside. <laughs> I've been out. <laughs> okay, okay. You're more than welcome. Lindy, over to you. All right. Uh -oh. um, so I think we've talked a lot about winter wellness and it felt like since we just wrapped up our last winter wellness uh, on the 1st of March, it'd be worth kind of sharing um, what's happened when this first started, if you want to go to the next slide, right, that should be fine. When it first started at Stockbridge and Rochester, we took all the students K through six up to uh, Snowball and Riker for cross country skiing and then snowboarding and um, downhill skiing more choices for older kids we could also snow uh snowshoe at Riker uh post COVID we kind of evolved to using Pico because it was a little bit closer and the number of staff and kids they can support is larger than what the snowball um could support um and the feedback from the kids was that they just wanted to go fast and cross country skiing sometimes allows for that but not um the speed that our group was looking for and this becomes, for those of you who don't know, one day of our physical education class during the six weeks that we yeah. do this. So um, PICO supports first grade through sixth grade students, anybody who wants to uh, join. Uh, we do break up into who needs lessons and who can ski or snowboard with a camera. And then students in kindergarten and, and just those who decide to try it, I don't wanna do it anymore, stay behind and get to participate in other outdoor activities. So I wanted to be able to share out both so you could see. Um, and the idea is that hopefully it is usually winter for a majority of our year so that students will learn some sort of lifelong activity and be willing to do it. So that's awesome. kind of, and we've been able to support it with all grant funding, which is great. So if we go to the next thing, so things that they got to participate in school, uh, opportunities on campus, 
snowshoeing, cross country skiing, even though they didn't get to go fast, uh, <laughs> but they learned. Um, those also, we were able to access cross country skis that strap right onto your um, shoes or boots. They built forts, they built their own fire in the woods, they built their own sled because there was less snow than there's been previously. Um, and usually we do do some ice skating, but the rink was not up and running this year. So if we go to the next, so um, the students who stayed behind made their own sled out of cardboard last week, two weeks ago, and raced it down the hill. Uh, they did learn some cross country skiing. The only reason they liked it is because they got to use the hill out here or out behind Rochester. So some future uh, downhill skiers, I think, are in our midst when they're old enough. <laughs> and then um, when it was really icy, there was a time that we had to say no sledding because they were going over these jumps. <clears throat> and um, my testing my concussion protocol knowledge was not fun. <laughs> so we've gone to penguin sledding where they all get to be penguins and slide down on their bellies, their butts, um, which they really enjoy, work just as well, less dangerous. And they, those that stay behind all made their own fire in our outdoor bathrooms and made their own hot chocolate. And probably one of the more popular ones was making snow volcanoes. So they made a volcano out of snow and then um, figured out how to make it react with baking soda and vinegar. Uh, at Pico, the choices are you can ski or snowboard with an instructor or ski or snow with a chaperone on the mountain. Um, so a lot of kiddos, it's their first time or the only time that they access this. The other great thing about this Pico program is just because we only go for six weeks, kids have access to the pass and the rentals the whole season. Mm -hmm. So um, it's still something that they can utilize with or without us. So it was very popular over half days because we had a lot of Friday half days. So kids would stay behind, but also vacation to be able to go. And so just a couple <coughs> learners on some skis. And then this person, kiddo on the right, there's two kiddos. They're both never evers. Um, and this was our second to last one. And it was the popular, can you please film me and send this to my mom? Um, so they know what I'm doing. But you're really working on making turns in the instructor group because otherwise you ended up in the little lift hut, which we have to do. So, uh, really short and sweet, but just not, I feel like we talk about it a lot, or I mentioned it a lot in my report. What's yeah. actually happening? Oh, they all love it. The, yeah. the ones that are there are just, yeah. Yes, they do really enjoy it. Um, and then there is some kid feedback from both on, I'm pretty sure, yeah, both on and off. So it typically becomes the best day ever. <laughs> Hard to top, why are you making me come back to school? Uh, they like to go to ski and go out and have fun. Um, doing jumps because that's a choice too on some of some of the slips. Um, the fifth grade student is a kid that would not go skiing or snowboarding if we didn't have this program. So to be able to go, I think was a big deal. And then a student who stayed back really enjoys being in the smaller groups that are multi-age um, and working with them in different activities. So that's kind of, it's quick. Sure, I mean, I think it's pretty cool because he's been with us, so he gets. There's so many kids that, without that, they would never pick Absolutely. it up. Like Ryan Whitaker, I, yeah. so he he joined us but the last couple mm -hmm. Fridays, and he even said he goes, if we didn't do this when we were kids, he's like, I would not, I wouldn't be doing this. He's like, yeah. my parents didn't do it; it wasn't something we did. Right. And he loves it, you know, and he does it all the time now. So it's pretty cool. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, I totally agree, and this is a lifelong sport. It really um, is. Even geezers can do it. Um, although we, we, we change our, the elevation of our slope sometimes. So um, I had a question um, for both of you. Uh, snowboarding or skiers, is there a predominance at this age of liking boarding versus skiing, or is it a 
it's pretty tough. It's yeah. pretty, it's, um, I thought originally when we switched to this model yeah. that it would be mostly snowboarders yeah. because that is one group that they say they can only um, focus or have X number of kids in lessons because they just don't have as many instructors for yeah. snowboarding as they do for skiing. But it's really a balance. I think um, the younger kids are pretty split. And they're also the group most willing to flip flop the first two years. Wow. Like, I yeah. tried skiing this time. Now I'm going to try snowboarding. And then I'm going to decide. Yeah. Um, and well, and that's interesting. Like, because I do both. Yeah. But I started my my girls. I started skiing. Mm -hmm. It's easier. It's yes. a lot less frustrating for them um and for me <laughs> um but now that like jana say she's at the level now where she's she could i think she could get on a board and easily pick it up right so maybe next year that's what she'll do is do lessons through the school or something if she wants to do it and we do see that happen with some older kids too yeah. like they've been skiing 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 yeah. and now they want to learn and this is an well, it's fantastic they're open to learning and trying new stuff the the question i have for patrick or i'd like to have in the minutes that if my memory is correct, that he's a ski jump uh, champion. Uh, I'm serious. And I, my question is, did you start going down that path of glory right here at Stockbridge Central? It was eighth grade. So I was over in Bethel. My father took a job running Storrs Hill nonprofit, Ski Hill in Lebanon, and they have a couple of North ski jumps. So I took it up then and uh fell in love with it and i had to quit playing basketball to do it which was a big decision right. and jana is actually in the same boat right now she just started ski jumping last month and uh she fell in love with it but it was the same days as basketball and she took her first jump came up the stairs she goes oh we're coming back <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was pretty funny i think that's fantastic but i do recall my son growing up and uh, basketball coaches would not countenance one of their players uh, interested in skiing because I mean, mm -hmm. they just thought they were just going to make a decision. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. congratulations. I want to know that, uh, that on the records that we've got yeah. a champ right here on on our side. Thank you, uh, Lindy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Kids and a um, special <laughs> shout out to Erica Harrington, our admin assistant. She does all the behind the scenes logistics that go with this. She helps organize the chaperone groups. She she did. I, I'm the one that says, we get up, come on, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. That's my role. Um, but she's the one who makes a lot of this happen. So thanks Gosh. to her. Gosh. Isn't it great kids hate to miss school because I hate to get sick because they're going to miss school. Oh, yeah. We're magically geared by Friday a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's okay. clears throat> Any other comments, yeah. uh, any questions, uh, observations from the team? OK. Thank you so much. Um, and may there be some more snow before. The tulips come up. Okay, um, reports to the board, superintendents. Uh, Jamie, over to you, please. So you have my report in hand. Um, I highlighted where we're currently at with the budget process. Um, we'll talk about that some more here. Um, in a little bit, but I also provided a, a progress monitoring update on the tasks that are associated with my professional goals for this coming year or the current year um, and wanted to, to provide all the district boards with some updates around where we're... a lot of good things happening. Um, one of the things I'm pretty excited about is uh, we'll be um, providing a draft for the full board to comment in regards to a communication plan uh, this month um which also does get into the efforts we have going on across the su in regards to marketing it, it provides a really good roadmap for that work in the event that you know administration was to turn over or board members leave i think it really speaks to you know how we want to go about our work in regards to communication so i feel really good about that it's a it's a fairly comprehensive plan i ray what is it got six overall goals with a lot of tasks and mm -hmm. I do worry it might be a little too big in some ways, but we'll look to get some feedback about it. Um, so I'm feeling really good about that. The other thing is um, we were able to hold two district budget votes in the SU um, on the Monday night prior to town meeting. Last week? Last week, sorry, it's been a blur. 
um, and we were able to successfully um, have two district budgets within the SU adopted at Sharon and at White River Unified District um, by pretty significant margins. So we're we're hoping those hold. Um, there is some talk about a reconsideration petition in White River Unified District, so we'll see what how that plays out. Um, and um, Stratford just adopted their budget tonight, so we're headed to uh, an Australian ballot vote in Stratford on the 15th of April and hopefully in first branch that same night as well. And I'll entertain any questions folks may have. The um, the legislature, I'm monitoring it fairly closely um, in regards to seeing what, what might come out of the session. Um, there's been talk about fundamentally changing education funding in the state happens. I don't see them getting any traction to take action on any type of significant bill this session. Um, you know, if one of the things that if you look at testimony and follow it, there's there's a little talk of of the idea of like a block grant type funding, um, which I think we would just have to monitor closely. Um, and the only reason why I think that could possibly pick up speed is that is what the agency of ed in Vermont does now in regards to um, special ed funding. Um, and so just stay tuned with that. If 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 you know if we start to see some drafts of bills that that look like they might pick up steam, I'll be emailing the board. Um, I won't wait around to update during board meetings. But thus far, not much coming um, as far as tangible bills um, out of House Senate or Senate right now. Questions, comments for Jamie? Well, as usual, yours truly has comments. <laughs> First of all, um, the second paragraph of Jamie's report, he talks about going out and speaking proactively to the, the media to tell what's going on and answer questions. What and why is going on and what can we do about it? And it's that proactive leadership where we communicate as effectively we can with the greater community that's going to put the how many decisions are made based on false information or i just talked to so and so or i just feel and that's not a sound foundation if you're talking about the future of our kids so jamie being out there and his team being out there proactively communicating answering questions not hiding it at all but telling the story i think is is commendable and it pays off and i think these first two voting results is an example of that secondly one of the key uh, goals for the superintendent and our su board is to have an enrollment strategy where we can attract retain and build social capital attract students get them to our su retain them so they don't go elsewhere and build the social capital so that we have voter support when we go to the poll, and uh, we got some successes there in in Rochester, where we're, where we're picking up students that might go elsewhere, um, and certainly the high school, um, big time, where you got 18 increases in enrollment. Every student that comes with us versus going somewhere else, if they're in our district, we save 20,000. That 20,000 goes to to, to cover overhead and, and make sure that we can be the best that it can be. Um, so this is this is critical and we've got going and Jamie talked about a communication strategy that we're not just kicking the can or doing this or that and hoping for the best. No, we're gonna we're gonna work at this diligently focused um, so that every kid that um, we can help get the best education in the world will consider us and come our way and stay that way. Um, so I want to um, highlight that. Um, 
Okay, so uh, let's then we'll hold on, finish on that. Uh, 7.1, go to 7.2, principal spring uh, Vermont cap data report and all the wonderful things going on in Rochester and Stockbridge. Yeah. Go ahead. So first, just my principal report for the uh, month. A couple things that I'll add um, to this that have kind of been going on is we're, and Jamie mentions it in his report as well, we're starting to wrap up the portrait of a learner process and we've had students that have been participating in that um, from both Rochester and Stockbridge, which has been great to see and as well as some school feedback on what um, kiddos and, and staff would like to see happen at their schools. Um, we also seem to be super busy with field trips lately, which is great, great opportunities to expand and get outside of our community with trips to the state house, lots of different local maple uh, sugaring houses, which has been a little interesting to plan with the seasons. Um, a few groups going on some hikes and other things. Um, and then the only thing I'll point to the board is we did have a pipe freeze um, over February break in Stockbridge. Thankfully, uh, it was caught super early and where the mitigation is almost complete and the repairs will be in this week. But other than that, that's questions or comments on that. I'm sorry, I didn't where was the pipe freeze? Uh, up in the attic over oh, the, the attic. kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the bathrooms in the hallway. Yeah. Setbacks were dialed back a little too much. Oh, is that one of the controls? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to sort it out with controls. Were they new controls? It's, yeah, this building got yeah. all new controls too. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit of a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. Other comments, questions? Robert, you got anything? Justine? Um, nope. Yeah, I. Um, I'm sorry, I get excited every time I read your report <laughs> and think about the, 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 the miracles that are happening here. One of it is that um, several of the students that get extra support, um, social emotional, um, I read exiting, meaning in the process of being able to rejoin the regular classroom. Um, have I got that correct? Uh, no, or, so they're in the regular classroom and what it means is they have some sort of support plan. It could be a check-in, check-out. Yeah. It could be some sort of targeted <laughs> plan. It just depends on what's going on. Um, but it means that the plan has been successful and they have the tools they need without the plan yeah. to hold them accountable. So they've been in the regular classroom this okay. entire time. I mean, that's, that's isn't it all about? I mean, Absolutely. They've got to feel better. Their parents got to feel better. Their friends feel better, and um, financially, it's it helps us. So that's just that's just neato. Um, we have several book clubs starting, and uh, yes. well, uh, I can't think of it. And, and we even got the books here. And I and I challenge any of the board members. Have you read any of these? The one and only Ivan, the Rovers and Story, and the Clackety. So I, I, I strike out on uh, They're Golden here, Dome book uh, winners. And the one and only Ivan is the one that's been out the longest. It's now a series, it's the first in the series. So they could pick among that and they have the first <clears throat> meeting last Wednesday in Rochester. And then next Wednesday, everybody will come here from 456 and they will share. Right now they're designing their own covers for the books as well as they have to read 10 pages per a week. Yes. So some of those books were chosen because they can be audio and um, also read. So every kid will own the copy of the book of the book club they're in after. And I want to make a note from the board that they read 10 pages a week. In okay. that particular book. Not okay, so that's 40 other readings going pages on a month. And we're only asking the board to read maybe an average chapter, which is 15. So I just want to point out <laughs> that our kids are really beating us to the uh, and setting the example here, and I hope we're going to listen and learn from them as we normally do. Um, you did? Well, I've got it right here today. <laughs> the, um, the final thing is the visit of all sixth graders to Bethel Middle School. So it's sixth graders. Yep. Yeah. It was open to anyone. Yeah. And it is um, it's just so many reasons why our kids from Rochester Stockbridge should be seriously considering Bethel 
But one thing is to be there to get the feel of the place, both the, the kids mm -hmm. and their parents, check it out and uh, and have that part of their decision making process. And I think that's exactly what we need to do because I think we've got a lot to offer. Are we all set? Let's roll. So in front of you, next is our uh, Vermont Comprehensive Assessment, Assessment Program results. Um, these are the end of the year state testing results specific to Rochester and Stockbridge. A um, couple things to kind of note, it looks similar, but a little different than your track my progress. One color coding similar, right? Um, it's probably flip-flopped in terms of like blue and green still mean you met or exceeded. Uh, yellow means you're partially there. And then uh, level one is emerging and that's how it's reported out on the state report to families um, for kiddos. So some huge celebrations, I think starting with English language arts, which is the chart on the bottom of page one or graph on the bottom of page one is none this is last year's sixth graders, right? Zero of these students were at level one or emerging. They were all um, either, you know, a majority are part satisfactory or thorough, or we call it meeting or exceeding. You said sixth, sixth grade? Yeah, yeah, last year's sixth yep. grade, right at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. And 23% uh, um, were at uh, partial. So of those kiddos in the Partial, they missed level three by less than 25 scale score points. That's a question or two. <coughs> uh -oh, blocked him out. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. No, you're good. So if we have to <laughs> state your name. <laughs> so um, that's a really big celebration. I also think of that group and everything. Uh, that would be a group that COVID started in third grade. And then fourth grade, we came back. So um, huge celebration uh, for them. Really proud of that. Um, and then kind of the area uh, third graders, which is their first time taking standardized test in this manner. It is slightly different than Track My Progress. It's longer passages that they're reading. Um, what I would say is, you know, 32% met or exceeded the standard or satisfactory or thorough. Um, of that 50% in the red, 75% of those students missed that level two by less than 40 scale score points. So we're we're right there. You know, you want to be close, ideally closer. But for our first go around, it's also our largest number of students um, that age group has the most academic targeted plans of support. So um, kind of makes sense for the group of kiddos that we saw. They're also a group that has. Um, made great gains already this year. So we're excited to see what they'll do this spring. Um, questions about what you're seeing with ELA? Might be easier to go that way. One is just flipping around, having the red on the left and the, so it's similar. And the blue, so it's, okay. it just makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, the 50% oh, yeah. in red uh, does draw our attention and it's, um, I guess my sense is that I don't, you know, we, this is a process. Right. This What's is interesting process. is it seems like it's it's trending grade to grade, though. Yes. It's tracking, like the red is getting smaller, which is yeah. what we want. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And we've seen the opposite with Track My Progress, where the K1 and 2 were stronger right. and the kids um, for their uh, fifth and sixth graders, mm -hmm. the COVID and everything else were, were uh, um, um, so it's very, very interesting. I read this and it says that we're going to use tracks our progress. Um, we test it three times a year. It has a, the information that teachers and administrators can use immediately right. to, that's my reading too, make course corrections individualized mm -hmm. student by student by student to have them move up from the left to the right or from red to right. to blue um and uh yeah and 
we have a, a test coming up in, is it the end of March, beginning of April? Right. Was that, so that we'll cap? start this testing, right? That. Science, which we'll get to in a minute, yeah. is the last week of March in both Rochester and Stockbridge. And then uh, the week after that, is, the first week of April is math, and the second week of April is literacy for ELA. Mm -hmm. So. Other other questions or comments, observations from our team? Okay, you want to keep continuing? Yeah, going. so if we go to the math um, assessment, I would say, again, a huge celebration is that sixth grade group because of all our groups, they did not um, get the fidelity of our curriculum all the way through, like what we've put in for some of these younger groups, even our third grade group from last year has had that longer than any of the older grades, but still not the same. Um, and so what we're seeing here are results of using a curriculum with fidelity, a program with fidelity, um, and helping to meet that standard. So we're growing tremendously. Um, it, grade four is always interesting. <laughs> I do think that's when you look deeper into the data, it's where you see the expectation of what type of math they're able to do increase from just not just multiplication, but fra multiplying fractions and mixed numbers and things like that. Um, so again, a lot of these students um, in that 58% missed the, the level two being in that yellow band by less than 25 scale score points. Um, so getting there, I guess, is the takeaway. It gives you some good data. Um, it is fairly comparable to what we saw uh, if I break down these grades last year and our track my progress. It's not um, quite the same. I would say big takeaways, right, are testing strategies in general. Track my mm -hmm. progress test is about 30 minutes, depending on the age group, a little longer, whereas this is about 90 minutes there in a test session, and it's two test sessions per content area. So that's very different. So we're practicing that stamina, that not getting click happy, because kids definitely reach that fatigue mm -hmm. level. I know I do as an adult, even, um, in developing a strong uh, baseline. For them. What kind of response are you getting from the kids, like as far as doing the testing? Uh, I think it's always hard for third grade, because it's the first time. It doesn't matter how you prep that yeah. length. Yeah. We're taking breaks. We're talking about it. We're doing strategies. We're practicing right now. They're Does it make them nervous? Uh, not really. Okay. There's maybe one or two, yeah. but they're nervous when they take track my progress. Yeah. So it's not yeah. a shock to yeah. us that like we're now able to be a little preemptive. Do you find, other than, than being able to track the their progress as a whole, that it is also allowing for individual individual ed educational plans like yeah it, so i think you can look at them as a, a cohort and yeah. then you can look and say um and this is what we do frequently in our data teams like okay so we know these two areas say operations and algebraic yeah thinking uh we scored low on well who who exceeded in that and needs a different type of challenge and who yeah. Means, who doesn't even have the foundational skill below that, like operations in base yeah. 10, to be able to build on that. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah. it is. Yeah. I, um, it's not easy. We, last month or the month before, we had the winter test scores from Track My Progress, and the average gain from last year, this year, is over a year. Mm -hmm. And we were one of the highest um, districts in both math and science in the, in the I don't know what you call it, percentage gain or the, uh, the measurement it measured in years of learning. So um, this is one benchmark. We're going to see how it proceeds going forward. Um, but we've got a very strong academic record. Um, and we're not going to rest on any laurels at all until that red disappears. It'll never disappear, but we're going to do everything possible to keep moving, as I said, from the left to the right on that. And I really appreciate that. Other comments or questions from the team? 
And I, I wonder how much of this um, we can, can we share any, any of this or like a snippet of it or a snippet and a link of it on our Facebook page regularly, kind of this stuff. I think this is kind of like, you know, it's nice to see pictures too, but this is also something that I think a lot of people don't pay attention to because they don't actively go to the website, you know, just wondering, yeah. throwing that out there. Um, yeah. The next is science, which is fifth graders only take this one. Um, what you're looking at. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised because we've spent a lot of time in literacy and mathematics and not as much time in um, our science instruction. It's not to say that kids aren't getting it, but we're definitely, um, what we're doing is working really well. And I do think it's because our kids are building skills to be critical analytical thinkers. And that's happening in a lot of different avenues from outdoor ed to science class itself, to different aspects of um, things that they're reading or talking about, so. Okay, so to summarize, this is a one, T test a year Yes. Um, that all the uh, students, uh, elementary students, the state of Vermont takes. It's a state uh, mm -hmm. formatted test um, and administered. Unfortunately, we don't get the results for like eight months after the test. Uh, hopefully they'll speed that up to I'll learn from it. Uh, the good news is that we test our students uh, with a different uh, testing right. curriculum in the fall, the winter, and the spring. So we have information that other than this, right. yeah. other than yeah. this, that is real time, so that we can keep our kids moving forward, and uh, I think that's that's the best way to go. And then the last page, um, those two charts. So the top one is yep. um, English language arts, and the bottom one is mathematics. And this just speaks to um, our average scaled score. So you'll see our fifth and sixth graders um, average scaled score in English language arts and in um, mathematics are above the state average. And then also in third grade in math, even though it didn't necessarily meet um, proficiency, our, our third graders math sc average skill score is above the state average of skill score. Oh, well, uh, don't know this right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and not to quote from our superintendent, but I will. You said that you're heartened and you have full confidence that we're going to be meeting our very darn close to some very ambitious academic proficiency goals by 2025. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Um, Tara, are you there? Good evening, everyone. Hi. You have my report, which outlines what's happening in the business office during the month of March, in addition to preparing for our annual meetings and budget revisions and getting that all taken care of. So I'll happily answer any questions on that. And then I also mm -hmm. did provide uh, fiscal year 24 quarter two projections so that we can go over as well. Questions, comments? It's always nice to see a projection as I must say, and as long as I've been on the board, um, that the projections are always that we are in the black and not in the red. <laughs> um, and that's uh, district by district as well as the whole SU. And for those people that say, oh, that's just simple. No, um, we've got to have a, our superintendent and the team has to have a very sharp pencil. And um, it looks like here that we're moving that direction here in our district. The yes, so on the expenditure side, based on what was budgeted versus the actual contracts that were issued, we have about $156,000 of potential savings there. And then on the health insurance, uh, the budget versus actual enrollment, we have just shy of $30,000 of savings there. So we have a projected uh, potential savings at the close of the year on the expenditure side of $186,000. 
And then on the revenue side, we were short just one tuition student, um, budget versus projected, but I actually got an enrollment for a new student today, so that'll be prorated. And mm. then um, interest income, as you know, because we have had the surplus, we have not had to utilize as much of our tax anticipation note. So that has accumulated interest um, in that arbitrage account. So that helps um, also with some offsetting revenue. And then miscellaneous, we've only received about $255 so far and rentals, we've only received about 1300. And then um, we had an adjustment on the budget versus the actuals on our grants. So overall right now, the revenue is projected a $16,000 deficit and then we add in the expenditure surplus. So right now we're looking at about 169,000 at the close of the year. We're under up to 170 times. What's the forestry grant all about, Tara? So the Green Mountain Forest Grant um, is revenue that you get directly from the Green Mountain Forest because you have so much property that is tied into the Green Mountain Forest. Run that dresser. Huh. That's town property. Yes, and it offsets because there's not property that's owned by your taxpayers that they can pay into the education grant list. So you get, um, you and actually Granville Hancock are recipients of Green Mountain Forest money every year. It's called payment in lieu of tax. I know that very well. Questions, comments for Tara? Thank you, and she says, if you, had, if you reported everything you were doing, Tara, you'd be on two or three pages. So I, I'm glad that you, you um, pull it all together and, um and one page but uh it's fantastic um thank you bill and we say it all the time uh it's not easy to be on the board it's not easy to be um doing everything we can to make education work um but this is one thing that we can kind of sit back on not not to be diligent but to have confidence in our team and uh, then we can ask questions rather than doubting what the numbers are all about. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's keep going. Um, policy committee update. Uh, Patrick, do you have anything at all on, on yeah. those two things? Uh, so we're reviewing policy B3, uh, alcohol and drug free work, workplace. Um, we had Marilyn, our lawyer, join us at our last meeting. Um, she had reviewed it and made some changes, but in the midst of that, she accidentally uh, made changes to the original and not the one that we had already been updating. So we have to mesh the two together. Um, but uh, she did add some language about um, misusing prescribed medication, whether using a prescribed drug that was given to you by, by your doctor um, or, uh, or, or not given to you by a doctor, but a friend gave it to you or whatever, um, or it was prescribed by a doctor um, but you're unfit to be uh, working in a safe, safe environment. Um, so she is, uh, um, she was, well, I don't know if she was gonna make those changes or you, yeah. I'm pretty sure Jamie was gonna make those changes if I'm sure he already did. Um, uh, and then uh, we also uh, reviewed B5 employee unlawful harassment. Um, Marilyn again then addressed Title IX, um, which I'm still trying to grasp my head around. But uh, anyway, ch uh, changes to Title IX um, are going are being made on a federal level, and um, mm -hmm. so, but it's not rolled out quite yet. So she said we could basically either hold off and wait, but she didn't necessarily recommend that because who knows how long it could take. Um, so she figured, you know, go through with the changes that we want to make for that policy, enact it, and then probably have to circle back and review it again. Um, but we did not, we did not um, have any action on either one of those, and decided that we needed more time. That's it. Questions? Want to add anything? No, it's perfect. <laughs> Any questions for Patrick? Appreciate it, Patrick. Yeah. Um, Mike. Because I, I have one question, and that is, 
we work on these two policies because we had a problem and we had a gap, or is it we're thinking proactively to make sure that we're prepared when we have a challenge that we know what to do and how to handle it, or is it both? It's both. Yeah. Both? Yeah. Yeah, we wanted to do some revisions to those two. They haven't been updated since 18, but I would say, you know, the fitness for duty aspect of it, I really see that as us being proactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what we need to do. And I uh, credit to the team doing that. Other questions, comments on this for Patrick? 7.5, uh, is our set endowment committee updated possible action on the mission statement? And uh, as we said, we're going to push that um, agenda item to our April meeting when Amy's back. And uh, um, there was a copy of the draft mission statement in the packet. So um, that's what that's what the document right now we're going to be considering for that action in <coughs> April. Okay, discussion 8.1, budget and corresponding tax sheet. And uh, we're going to need some help on that. So, uh, Jamie, you're going to start. start. Yeah, and Lindy and Larry can jump in. Um, so, in regards to your expenditure budget, we have not touched it since last month. It remains the same. So, just a reminder. I, mean, I, I think I, as your superintendent, am incredibly proud that we're looking to operate two buildings with inflation the way it is. I'll control it's up 16.4%. And we have a four, you know, just barely over 4% increase in expenditure budget. So we haven't touched that um, component of, your, of the budget. As a board, I took away um, that you're looking for the administration to come back with, at a minimum, an equalized tax rate, rate that was flat, meaning that the only thing that would add any increase to your final estimated tax rate would be due to the CLA, the common level of appraisal. Yes. And so when we met, that's what we went after. Um, and so on top of that, what I think it's important for you guys to know is we were able to execute an agreement um, with VTVLC from Mount Virt Virtual Learning Cooperative. We do expect that we're gonna receive another um, they estimate seven students entering into our tuition pool next year. We did not carry all seven in your revenue budget. Okay, we carried four. Just because we're being cautious, if we yep. get seven, that's great. I never like to overestimate revenue. It's really hard to make up that difference um, within the expenditure, all right? So your revenue has been adjusted there. We're also still carrying $100,000 from the prior year surplus. You'll see that's down from last year. We are estimating a slight surplus for this year, so that's good to know because I don't want us to get in with a circumstance where we've used surplus funds and then we don't have any the next year to help, you know, pay that down because then you start in a hole. So for an example, if we had no surplus next year, um, you know, it's just important for you to remember that a penny on your tax rate is 32, 32, 32, 32. 32. So that's three cents, yeah. right? That we would need to be making up for next year. We're looking like we're going to have a surplus. So, you know, as we go through the budget process, it'll be the type of thing where we need to decide if we have a surplus, you know, are we going down to just 56 next year? We won't know, you know, it, until like this time of year, right? It's really hard by the time we get all the numbers, but just know. Um, it's one of the things that, you know, we can look, we can give that money back to taxpayers. It is a one-time give back. We don't have that next year. We start in the hole by those three cents. Um, and so we did do the hundred thousand dollars toward the revenue. And then that gets us to our, our tax rate sheet, which I'm going to have Tara lead you through but the big thing that i wanted to emphasize which i tried to do in the letter did you all get to see the letter mm -hmm. that i sent out to the community <clears throat> is that you know prior to factoring in any changes to the common level of appraisal which we have absolutely no control over zero um we would actually be looking at a decrease in the tax rate by 3.27 percent if it didn't happen if it, it, it was the clas didn't drop so much yeah, yeah. 
So Tara, do you want to lead them through the tax sheet? Sure can. So right up at the top, the budgeted expenditures is $4,840,551. We then back that out with your offsetting revenue and Jamie explained what we've changed there. So that currently is a total of $712,067. That gives us an Act 68 education spending of $4,128,484. We divide that by the long-term weighted average of 331.07, and that gives us the education spending per pupil cost of $12,470.12. We divide that by the yield, and we're using the, the most updated yield that we had as of February 27th, which is $9,785. So that gives us an equalized residential tax rate of 1.2744. And as Jamie just explains, that is a reduction of 4.31 cents or 3.27%. So from there, we take your equalized tax rate and we divide that by your common level of appraisal for each of the towns. So for Rochester, that gives us a projected homestead tax rate of 1.7268, which equates to 21.26 cents or $212.65 per $100,000 of value. And in Stockbridge, again, you take that equalized tax rate, you divide it by the common level appraisal, and that gives us an estimated homestead tax rate of 1.8783 which equates to an increase of 14.43 cents or $144.28 per $100,000 of value. Any questions or comments for Tara or Jamie on the tax rate sheet um, dated March 7th? Um, it, is it just me or is our per pupil cost down? No, no, your, your equalized tax rate is down. Your per pupil is down this year because remember the weights changed. So it's not. Uh, so the pupil, it, 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 yeah. yeah, you don't want to compare your per pupil this year versus last year. Okay. They changed the weights. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and we, and remember that was within an act 127. Mm -hmm. Um, in general, we did gain some additional tax capacity within 127, mm -hmm. um, which is why we can get an equalized tax rate that's actually down, mm -hmm. uh, even though our expenditures are up 4%. Oh, I'm sure you're okay. <laughs> All right. So, At what uh, point this is... can the public make a comment to these uh, proceedings? Let me just hold on. Let me just make sure we've got um the uh, board members uh, full discussion there um and then i'll give you a minute or two after it after all those questions or comments are made if you just hold on please um, thank you uh, yeah. welcome this is this is robert um just so i uh, because this is always very confusing for me um uh, i understand the um the CLA is come about because of the uh, discrepancies in sales of of properties versus what their appraised values were, and I understand both both towns are up for a town wide reappraisal. And if it's my understanding is correct, once that reappraisal is done, the CLAs will will revert to. Um, 100%, is that correct? Um, well, yes. I mean, sometimes even a, more than 100, Robert. But what we have saw in Stockbridge is they reassessed just right when COVID was happening mm -hmm. and they didn't take account for, you know, the COVID upswing. And so mm -hmm. they instantly started dropping. So it really depends on that real estate market. If we had another spike, um, in sales, then that they would adjust accordingly. Now, even without reassessment, let's say that if all of a sudden the market tanked, you would start to see those CLAs rise again as well. 
we have seen that even without reappraisals, you can see sometimes the, those CLAs increase. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, uh, Thank you. You've been kind of whiplashed two different directions. That Act 127 attempted and I think moved in, a, in the right direction of, of looking at how state aid um, is allocated between cities and towns. And they, and this is an issue that goes back quite a while that um, uh, kids don't learn all on the same level and, and, and need the exact same level of resources uh, to learn and ex excel. And um, we're one of these communities, we're not, uh, we're not the Woodstocks, we're not the Norwiches, we're, we're a modest community. And, Act 127 readjusted, they call it the wane, but it's the it's it's recognizing that uh, that our children could use more help and that help can cost more money and the state aid is going to follow them. On the CLA, it's <clears throat> frustrating because the CLA is in existence so that this small towns like Rochester and Stockbridge can afford to have quality education. And one way they do that is to make sure that towns don't cheat by just under assessing their property owners. And then how is the state going to make up that difference? And the state saying, we'll pay the fair share, but we want every town to, to pay a reasonable amount. And it just so happens we're in a hot market in these two communities. And so that we've got this shock called a common level of appraisal. Um, the third thing I want to say is that when we look back at the five years that we've been together, Rochester Stockbridge, and you look at the impact on our taxpayers, and you look at the impact of the education and the performance of our students, both those indicators have been very, very, very positive, good things. We're in a, we've got a challenge here, but based on that track record, I think we're in a great position to move forward. Other questions on um, on this sheet before we go further. And um, um, the gentleman or the, the that I got on the phone call, are we gonna? If you want to make a, a brief comment. Well, I guess my comment relates to a comment I made at your last meeting with regard to transparency. So I look at a letter that was um, from March 2024, and it says that there's a 3.11% decrease from last school year. But it also then qualifies it by saying prior to the CLA. And I don't feel that this is transparent because we all have to factor in the CLA which I understand school districts have no control over. However, that does have a direct impact. So why doesn't this letter say, due to the CLA, the Rochester school tax will increase by 14.04% and the Stockbridge school tax will increase by 8.32%. To me, that's transparent, and Thank you. that's what I don't understand. Okay, we're not going to have a discussion on that because uh, we've got an agenda to complete. I will say that you have opportunities ahead. One is that the superintendent uh, proactively communicated through uh, 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 coffees and, uh, and uh, meetings with the community and also in the letter. We also have our our SUD annual report that will be coming that has detailed information. And then finally on, um, on May 7th, we will have our meeting and we will have a presentation there and be able to take whatever questions or comments we have. Um, one of the but things- But where is the transparency? I, I received a letter me, from Stockbridge. I'm sorry, uh, this is not an open. This is not an open discussion. I, um, I granted well, you the comment. This is not okay. a. This is this is uh, a repeat. Uh, 
So thank you. Thank uh, you very point much. Point of order. Point of order. Uh, yeah. The uh, w one, it's customary to have the uh, anyone who's speaking to identify themselves. And uh, two, we do have in the agenda agenda periods for public comment. We had a public comment period that was passed earlier, and I believe we have one uh, uh, future future in the uh, today's uh, agenda. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Uh, could the this could we have the speaker identify who he was? Sure, my name is Keith Spalacki. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Okay, let's keep going on the, the, the budget here. So, I mean, so where we're at is as a board, you know, you, you really have two different levers you could use. Uh, <clears throat> and in order to change your tax rate, okay? So you could use some additional revenue um, from your last year's surplus to put it as an offsetting revenue. And in order to gain a penny on the tax rate, you would be looking at um, needing to increase that 100,000 of revenue by 32,395.20, right, for a penny. Um, or, you know, you'd have to push the administration back to look at it further um, expenditure decreases. I mean, really where we were at with that would be us needing to eliminate an elementary teacher, um, which could be problematic next year. Um, and so that would be, you know, the last cut that we would be able to do. And would it be filling the position we've been trying to look for? But when we look at enrollment for next year, you know, we're expecting that our class sizes are going to be good size at Rochester. So that's where that teacher would go. Yeah, I think the board's made it very clear that we want to be um, a sharp pencil and we want to be as cost effective. And we have been that way when you've got a 4% increase and you've got um, health insurance uh, and salaries going up considerably more than that, considerably more than that. So, uh, but we also said that we did, we want a sound education where every kid can get the education they deserve. And uh, we've asked you more than once, is this budget gonna allow us to continue on that mission? And um, I ask you again, is this budget gonna? You know, I'm really proud of, of the budget, like I started with, like 4%, I'll put that up to any other districts expenditure increase in the state. Mm -hmm. I mean, the state's averaging over 12 and a half percent. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, the fact that Rochester Stockbridge is coming in at four, I'd ask anyone to do their research on it. It, it, it is a really solid expenditure budget. Um, the surplus, um, help us here on, on the um, draft of the warrant our school warrant, um, we have on Article 8 um, for the voters to authorize the school board to transfer a certain amount of money that's surplus of $389,000. Um, now, is that include the $100,000? So is it really $100,000 less than that? Yes, correct. It'd be $100,000 less than that. You had a surplus of three eighty nine four sixty. Yep. That hundred thousand comes right off of that. Okay. So we're really talking revenue. about two eighty nine. You're actually right? talking about two eighty nine four sixty. So then you could decide with that two eighty nine four sixty. We never say use every single dollar because there could be billbacks from last year, right? Yep. That 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 twenty thousand could cover, especially when we think about um, billbacks that can occur in regards to tuitions. So out of that remaining 260, you could choose to use some additional funds of the 260 toward revenue. You could also, um, you do have, we did our research on this. You do have a um, tuition reserve fund that was created in 2018 that you could also choose to add well, to the that that in the did, budget. Or I think the last meeting we, we all kind of like the idea of putting some Tuition reserve fund. It's not in the budget, it's a reserve fund. 
Okay, but it's it's not, on the warning any, right now. it's not on the warning right now. Yep. We need to add that if okay. you want to put that on the warning. Mm -hmm. And um, we increased what you were putting. Remember the last draft, you had 50,000. So we already increased it to 100,000 on the reserve. Sorry, on the last year surplus is your revenue figure. So we wanted to talk that through tonight. I do think putting some towards tuition makes sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, so what is it per student and how many students should we be considering? You know, a placeholder you could use is 20,000. So if you want to do three kids, that's 60 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to start. So the right now that tuition reserve is... It was created, but there's nothing in it. There's, there's nothing, nothing in it. it. Oh, yeah, yeah that we definitely... Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was created in 18. It hasn't been funded since. Tara, I got that right? You did. Um, it seems like we've got three possibilities here. And we mentioned one, which is to start building that tuition reserve. Mm -hmm. um, and if we have a reserve, that by definition, it's not zero. So the question is what we can do responsibly because um, those tuitions, uh, we can't control either what the charge is per student or the number of students. We can influence the number of students and we're doing that already. Um, so that makes sense prudently to set some money aside for those that uncertainty. The second thing is that we're trying to build a capital reserve fund so that we're not a hair on fire when things happen. And we've started that effort over the last two years of $65,000 <laughs> a year, um, but by my math, that's nowhere close to if you take a depreciation of our buildings and in, in their estimated lives and you set aside money. So uh, another option we would have is to boost our $65,000 to something more realistic. Well, and that is doing that here. On Just to be clear, on Article 8, that 260 number yes. is in addition to what you've budgeted. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, well, yeah, we put 60,000 in our As budget. a transfer, right? Yes. But I don't disagree that. I don't either. Yeah, yeah. We don't but have no, but we much should, in We got to consider that. I just want to make certain. You well, know, so like, what's in that fund right now? Do we know that? 281,000 minus, I think, the 40,000 we yeah. spent for DEI. Yeah. Um, and it's just a, a pittance. Um, so that's something that I think we need to noodle about. And the third thing is um, um, these increases, these percentage increases, as much as we did with the 4% expenditures, um, to consider being able to do more. And one way to do more would be to dedicate some of that surplus monies um, to reduce the tax impact. Um, so I um, I like to hear from um, the board members on kind of those three choices, and it's not either or. It's uh, you know it's, to me it's kind of how you carve the cake, and you're carving which, two sixty. Uh, we're carving two sixty, and the question is um, between uh, the uh, tuition reserve, the capital reserve and uh, being able to, uh, to cut that 4% increase, uh, which is really a minus because of the weighing um, even more. So I wanted to hear from um, Robert and Justine, what, what, what your thoughts on that? And then I'll swing back to Patrick. Robert? Uh, well, I thought we had gone over this uh, a fair amount. And although it's nice to hear that we may have additional students, I thought the balance we had had come to was pretty reasonable, but I'm, I'm willing to be convinced for otherwise. Oh, remind me because my memory is, is, uh, is it continues to be blatantly uh, uh, undernourished. Go ahead. Please remind us, uh, Robert. Remind you of the, well, I thought the balance of, of what we're putting into reserve. Uh, that what we're putting into reserve is is appropriate. Um, 
what we're putting in the reserve would be the, the $260,000 for capital. Mm -hmm. Hearing you correctly? Is that right, Robert? The 260 in, in into the capital, I thought that was, our figure was less than that. Could, could you clarify that, Tara? 260 is what I had based on using the $100,000 as offsetting. So I can go back and look at your other minutes. I don't know otherwise. So, so just, just to review, Robert, mm -hmm. you had a surplus last year that was audited of 389,460. All right, we've used right. 100,000 of that as offsetting revenue in your current mm -hmm. proposal. Right. That, that leaves us 260. And so the question is, do you put that full 260 into capital improvements or do you take and take some of that 260 and put it toward a tuition reserve fund? And the third question is, do you take that 260 and put some of it also toward further offsetting revenue or not? Okay, my, my um, as far as I'm concerned, I think the 260 going into reserve funds is appropriate, whether it should all go into capital or if we should divert some of it to, um, uh, divert some of it to the um, tuition reserve fund, I'm, I'm easily swayed, but I think we should put that, that we, we don't need to put more into um, offset setting revenue. That's my opinion. Okay. Thank you very much. I kind of hear that. Um, Justine, what's, what's your take? Yep, I, I agree with Robert, but I'm more leaning toward the um, capital improvements. I I think that that's something that I have on the uh, you know in my mind a lot when I think about all the other things we're working on um, and mission and vision and uh, even tuition yeah uh, not tuition enrollment. Um, so for me, I would focus more on capital improvements and maintenance. That's my choice. Okay. I have a question for Amy, uh, for uh, Jamie, if I may. Go ahead, Robert. Um, is are you worried that we'll be locking this money into capital reserve when we might might need um, might need it in tuition reserve? Is that a worry for you at this point? It's a little bit of a worry. Yeah, I mean, my thought process was that. You know, we, we have the tuition reserve set up. We ought to at least put a, enough money away to cover a student or two. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I, I think we should put 60,000 of it into that. That covers three students, like you said. I think it's foolish to have a reserve fund without any money in it. We will find that when we need it. <laughs> so that's 260 minus 60 for the- And on top of that, we already put in 60 into our budget. So we are, you know, we will have 260 going in there so why not take 60 of it put it away in there i don't think that it i, I don't think putting any more towards the, the revenue is going like you said isn't going to make a massive significant change to the budget and i i mean i i think that we need we need to put more money into our reserve fund <coughs> for, for capital sorry capital reserve fund but i heard you say um of the 260, 60 going for uh, I think, commission, yeah, I think 60 <laughs> yeah. reserve, and then the rest of it for our capital. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd, I'd be willing to do that. Yeah, I like that idea. Very much so about the capital improvements. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so my question you don't is: need that, Can we? Uh, what's the timetable? How quickly do you need this decision? By next week, we got to get a budget put to bed to start getting the hours yeah, out and stuff. Okay, do you, do you, do you need a, a vote on this, uh, Jamie, or is uh, just a, a sense of the no, board? I mean, Chair would amend your warning accordingly. So as a board, you could approve your budget tonight. It is warned that way if you chose. Mm -hmm. And you could approve your warning. And and uh, vote, at Roberts, actually by approving your warning. That's what, you know, mm -hmm. would change these figures. Mm -hmm. Or we would need to warn a special meeting 
I'd suggest by Monday of next week to adopt a budget and a warning. Um, here's my take. Uh, Amy isn't here, and Cynthia isn't here, and uh, uh, Amy has uh, shared her thoughts without seeing the full report. And <clears throat> she's flying; she's probably still in the air, trying to land, and um, that sort of thing. So my tendency is this is a, this is a big decision. It's an important one, and I'd love to have it where we've got the the opportunity for the full board to um, countenance. So, um, and you can disagree with me and uh, I'll take the, the uh, whatever uh, you say, but I guess my, even though it's another meeting, I, I, uh, is there another way we can do this? I, I'd love to be able to yeah, have I mean, a, can a we Can we come to a conclusion where then you put together an email and, and have them approve it? No, no, we have to have it. It has meeting. to be a public, okay, a public meeting um, for a good reason, yeah, so that no, everybody can hear us um, and follow us, and uh, it's recorded. So, um, and it's just, um, I think it's, I think it's important because this is an opportunity to, to to really boost something that's been underfunded for years. Both tuition, and we're starting to build the kitty, and capital. Um, and it's it's the capital thing that, from my professional experience, always gets kicked down. You kick the tires. You mean you can't use this truck for another year? Of course you can use the truck. So does the truck ever get replaced? Does it break down? So we've got to do the responsible thing. But I'd like to have the opportunity for the full board and um, ask when, what would work for staff for a meeting next week, a, a, a date and a time. What are, I mean, what do your guys' calendars all look like? I want to make certain the yeah, four of you that yeah, you know, to turn into tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we're talking um, Tuesday night. We already have two. Yeah. So Tuesday night's out. Monday night would work. I'd want to do it by Wednesday at the latest. I just I want to start getting materials I, together. I can do anything. I can't do Wednesday, but I can do Monday. Justine, what are you about for Monday? I, I'm looking right now. Uh, uh, just a second. That'd be the 18th. I'm, and Robert? I'll be fine for uh, Monday. That's. It really shouldn't take too, too long. No, I think this could be a, almost a one agenda item. Yeah, yeah. it would be two. Would yeah, be I think I can, I can do Monday, the 18th. You're okay? Uh, yeah, a similar. It would be like at this time, similar time. Is that okay with you? Six. Will you put it in the calendar, or say, yeah? Okay. Okay. Next time. And where do where will it be? Where is it? Here. Let's Here. Start. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. Uh, Six p.m. Monday the eighteenth, right here at Stockbridge. It'll be hybrid. In hybrid. Okay. Um, all right. Other uh, budget um, questions. Um, yeah. yeah, is the budget should be pretty, this is unchanged. I'm not going to change it yeah, for next yeah. week. You're going to yeah. literally see the what same we're talking thing. About, <laughs> yeah. What we're talking about is those carryovers money is how those are utilized. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put a warning just so you know, that shows only a hundred thousand toward revenue. Yes. And we're going to add a tuition reserve fund, part of your warning, yep. for 60. Um, uh, that's correct. And, and we're going to make a decision on that after discussing it next Monday. Yep. At six and we'll adjust if we need to that night. And the remainder for the capital. Yeah. And if you change your mind that night, we just we change it on the fly. Yeah. Yeah. And we vote. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me just cool. ask. I'm sorry. It's you're doing pretty well. Uh, Tara, under uh, debt service. I thought we had finished all the debt service for the high school, and that's gone. But we've got that's your EI lease. Uh, the the, the thirty nine thousand seven hundred. That's, that's your EI. Lease. That's the EEI. Yeah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I knew there had to be an answer to that. All right. Any other questions of the board on the budget? 
Okay, let's go on then to annual meeting updates. Speaking there. Um, we've got annual meeting updates and we got an annual mailer. Yeah, they kind of go ahead and Annual warning. Um, well, the warning we're gonna, we already sort of talked about, yeah. but. Um, oh, let me just go back there. For those of you who don't, like I am, I kind of get sloppy when I'm reading, I'm not that precise, but the warning as our Australian ballot elections the day after the town meeting. If I'm correct, it's on May 8th and our town meeting is on May 7th. And I believe that's in to respond in a positive way to correct. people that were con noticeably and understandably confused when they had to go to the town office to vote for the Australian ballot and then then go for the budget and everything else. And this is a way that we can pass the budget and do all the other town meeting stuff. And then the next day, and we can remind them that night to go and vote Correct. for the candidate of their choice. So just notice that I think that's a very sophisticated way, simple way to make uh, the election of our officers, uh, excuse me, board members, uh, transparent and, and doable. So, um, Whoever came up with that idea, kudos. Um, okay, Sarah, back to you. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Uh, so the annual meeting would be here. We'll start working on slides like we did last year. We have a, a few slides that are now geared toward 127, HH50. Here, let folks know they've been hearing a lot about, you know, all the things that have changed in in regard funding. So we certainly will highlight some of that. We've received good feedback from both the White River Unified District presentation and that Sharon. Um, and so we'll go to work on those slides. I, it would be great to have the board pass for the board to pick a spokesperson to speak to a few of these budget slides. Good for that we can work with. Um, Tara and I can review a couple of the budgets. I think it's important for the board. Or it could be, you know, Patrick's feeling really confident about talking about added money. It's going to take the reserve slide, right? And then we can connect with each of those individual board members on that slide and just rehearse it. Yeah, and um... I'm more than happy to talk about the financial impact of the articles of agreement between Rochester and Stockbridge uh, that called for a review after five years. We've had five years, um, and I'd like to be able to share that with uh, the audience there. Um, and I also, as you know, I like to look back and see what the actual tax impact is, our school budget. And I'll uh, work with Tara and you on, and Amy and the board on, on that. Again, it, um, we need to look at, at a, we, our vision's got to be broad, looking ahead and also looking behind. And uh, a very simple um, slide or two could, can help see that perspective. Um, thank you. Uh, the mailer. Um, where are we guys? Uh, Amy would love to delegate that to. Is that? It's going, is that is going to take that over so we can use something similar to what it sounds like. Okay. So we've got a, a good mailer template that we use now with all the other districts. Um, what we do need, though, is a letter up from the board. Um, so we're going to need to get. Uh, when, when do you letter. need that? Well, Tara, I'm thinking the goal would be that we're trying to get that mailer totally completed by the end of next week. Correct. Oh, so, yeah, sooner rather than later. You might need to figure fill in a couple figures after we actually take formal action, but we're going to behind the scenes need to start going to work on this mailer um, this week. Yeah, and once we finalize the budget, we'll finish up the mailer. And the target date for the mailer to, um, to get out? Well, we, they have to have it in hand within 10 days of the vote. We've tried to get it out in hand, um, but we're, we're a little tight. Understandably 
So, um, so I'm just trying to figure out here. You know, the good news is the printer's probably not quite as busy right now, Tara. Well, in theory, they normally aren't, but now with all of these revotes that are happening and the meetings that got pushed out, we could potentially be having a first in issue. So I need to have a conversation with Spalding and see what their quantity is. So by Tara, by the, the 22nd, we've got to have um, the RSED board letter. Definitely. Um, a proof read and everything else in, in, in your hands. Is that correct? Correct. Or, R21. Okay. Um, let me talk to Amy when she gets gets back on that. Okay. Um, if we go to 8.4 annual warning, we talked about that, and we've I think you um, give us direction discussion on that, and we're going to make that decision uh, Monday in the evening here uh, when we convene at six o'clock. Um, board development book study. I know that you're excited to talk about this and um, you're hoping that I'm going to be brief. And I'm going to be brief. And one reason I'm going to be brief is because we're doing the right thing. The chapter we were reading on the essential school board book, Better Governance in the Age of Accountability, was avoiding pitfalls. And I read that chapter, and there's like 18 pages in it. And these pitfalls were basically boards that were dysfunctional. Boards that didn't get along, boards that didn't listen, boards that didn't respect, boards that individuals felt that they could speak for the board, um, staff, or, or micromanage the staff, um, boards that did not have a clear set of governance rules and protocols. And um, I think, our protocols and governance should have been written in that chapter because they kept pointing to the need of what we've had here. And I'd like to say that we didn't do it under distress. We didn't do it because we had a problem. We just wanted to get stronger. And I think we're pretty darn strong. So I brought up copies about that, but I'll just read a couple of our, our protocols. But um, Individual board members don't have authority, only the board, the collective board. We, you could say this in your sleep. If, if you couldn't go to sleep, you could recite these things. Um, um, the board will lead by example. will avoid words and actions that negatively impact an individual, our board, or the district. Once the board makes a decision, the whole board will support it through actions and words. Surprises the board meeting shall only be brought forth under special circumstances. The board will bring any of its requests or concerns regarding personnel directly to the superintendent. It goes on. We've got 11 protocols. We've got six board governance principles. And um, so we're, we're doing well on that. Now we're going to have hurdles ahead. Um, Everybody has a point of view about their schools and what should be done and what we're not doing and what we need to do. So we need to be to work together to listen and to learn um, and to respect and to do by best for our students. So is there anybody else that want to uh, weigh in on chapter four pitfalls to avoid? I want to point out the scorecard section. We're already doing the evaluation process. I think that I thought I was like, yes, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, and it leads to discussion and inevitably we we, we kind of yeah, we could do a little better there. You know, I hadn't thought of that or so but the bedrock is that respect uh, and understanding. Um coherence in why we're here and what our role is and what our role is thank you Pat so we're going to um let's see what the schedule is April we're going to do chapter five when things go right um and uh, and then in May we're going to take a break and then we're going to celebrate in June looking ahead so um thank you for for your diligence in reading and making a difference it's 
It could be fun. Okay, district's mission statement. We've got a great um, redraft by Justine, and if it's okay, Justine, we're going to push that back to April. I wasn't quite sure whether um, you had higher priorities, um, and we can do that as well as the endowment mission statement in April, um, if that's okay with you, Justine. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, action. We've done the tax sheet. We've done the warning mission statement. We're pushing. We're going to defer the endowment mission statement. We're going to defer new hires and resignations. None of it. None. Okay, public comment. We had. Uh, um, I think Keith was here. Keith, are you still with us? I am. Do you wish to have a public comment? You, you, you've talked about transparency. Is there something else that you'd like to talk about? No, I really would like to follow up before I was, um, you know, I was speaking at a turn and I appreciate the board's, you know, decision that I needed to be silenced at that point. But no, transparency is extremely important to me. And I, I received a, um, an email from Stockbridge earlier today, which was the annual meeting warning. And I noticed in Article 7 that the numbers quoted, which came from the FY25 estimated tax rate um, sheet, at least as I see it, they quoted the total expenditure of 4.8. They told they quoted the twelve thousand four hundred and change for the uh, equalized pupil rate, mm -hmm. but they don't discuss what the impact is on the actual tax rate for the community, and I just don't understand that. And everybody, you know, speaks about transparency, but how do you address the fact that you're not? telling the taxpayers what the actual increase is going to be to the individuals. Yes, and if I can cut in here, Keith, uh, that's why we have an annual report that is full of that information, charts, graphs, and uh, text and numbers. We also have an annual meeting, and that's the whole purpose of this meeting together so that we can have a forum to discuss those things. But don't you want to make it simple for the people? Don't you Maybe, want to spell it out? Um, these articles you put these are, numbers out here, but you neglect to put in very important numbers. This is what the state requires. Yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm going to leave it at that with, with your opinion on that. Oh, uh, that's um, really yeah. you know that's really avoiding the question, and that's my problem. So there is no transparency in this process. Um, uh, may I I'm speak? Honor that board comment. Okay, Robert. Uh, this is Robert. Uh, yes, Hi, Robert. Um, I. I'm not sure which email you got, and that maybe something was that generated by the town or. Uh, uh, can, I think can, it says the annual meeting warning, and this is. Of the legal voters of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District, consisting of the towns of Rochester and Stockbridge, are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Stockbridge campus of the Rochester Stockbridge United District in Stockbridge on May 7th at 7 p.m. to consider and act upon the following. And you list articles 1 through 10. And as I said, Article 7 gives you a, you know, a brief overview of total amount of the expenditure, the cost per student, but you don't really tell the constituents of our community of what that means to them. And I, I'm, I'm not sure how people make a decision without knowing, you know, you say all these reports, they're out there, and yes, but... Well, Let's I'm make it sorry, simple. You're, you're repeating yourself, and I'm, uh, as a chairman, I'm going to call you on it. Uh, I, may, I, may may I, I was questioning yes, about you, what I had. You, you yes, uh, may, 
May, may I may I ask a question of Jamie? Uh, we haven't approved a warning yet. What, uh, what? I, I don't know. I don't know why the warning got shared, other than it was part of the packet, Robert. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so, to, the board yeah. Packet. So let let this was a draft warning. I think I'm not sure exactly what what you saw. I think there's what you have seen is some correspondence that that is being shared with the board, which has not no. been approved yet. No, no. That, Just so you know, I received this from Stockbridge, the Stockbridge board. This did not come from. I believe the select with. board sent it out, Robert, and I can't speak to all why that happened or if it was a mistake. Yeah, it didn't but come. It didn't come from the school board. It didn't come from the school board. Um, it hasn't been approved. It's approved. still a draft, and it need to. Be, and Keith, you you made your point. Okay, okay. We, we we listened to you, but I'm not going to spend the rest of the night having you repeat. Okay. Uh, emphasis. It's it's you fine. Know, but let me tell you. Let me tell you again, sir. I've gone to over 75 town meetings and school meetings in my career. Maybe it's closer to 100. Okay. The reason we have these meetings is so people ask like yourself can ask the question and those questions can be answered that we can provide not only written material but presentation here on the spot and so to say that i can understand more of everything was a australian ballot and you didn't have any information to make your vote on but here you you're, you're sitting in a forum where you can ask questions and listen to the answers and then decide in your best ability what's the best interest of the community. So I'm going to leave it to that. And okay. So any, other, any other questions on this? May, may, may I uh, make one response? What you received or what, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you received. We have not approved a warning. I know in the documents that I have that we are considering for the warning, um, we do specify what the percentage increase is for Rochester uh, voters and for Stockbridge voters. It is in my information. I'm not sure what 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 information you have that may be some draft information which has not been approved for well, um, uh, yeah. the email I received. May I just say well, something? Yes, yeah. sure. Yeah, so, um, Robert, right. The tax sheet would certainly go out to voters in the annual mailer. And Article 7, that language is what we are required to provide via statute. So I would, you know, let any constituent know if they have concerns about the way that that language is worded. That needs to be taken up with the legislature. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Uh, for what it's worth, I do... Um, I don't know what Keith saw either, um, and I see the warning that we have as a draft and realize that, that it, it is a draft. So I think it, as far as public comment goes, I think it would be helpful for the public to comment and on uh, information, whether it be correct or not, that is confusing to them and leave it as a statement for us to work with as we continue with the draft. Is that fair? Is that something that we can just have Keith concisely? Um, describe his concern, and then that would be the comment, and we can use that later without having to answer right now as a board who hasn't seen what he's seen. We can't answer it because we don't have a full board here. And yeah, so well, I, I, no, and yeah. also we, we don't know what he's working with, but I think it's helpful to hear the public uh, confusion. For me it is, anyway, because I know it, there's a lot of it, and I hear a lot of it in the public. So I think it's helpful for us to hear it without having to necessarily give an answer. But if we can let him just express his concern and confusion and, and without kind of trying to answer right off, I think it would be helpful. Yep. Yeah, I think Article 7 is, I think, the confusion. I think that keeps indicating that the tax rate should be there. The tax rate's never finalized until the yield's finalized in May or June. It's an estimated finalized tax rate. Article 7 language is what the legislature says you need to have on your warning. But Jamie, this is Keith again. My, I guess my question is, but you quote numbers from that tax rate sheet. So why don't you include all of the numbers? 
Because you can't put that on the article, Keith. I just answered that. Talk, take that up with the legislature. Have them change the law, and then we can do it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Is there any other member of the public here that would like to speak? Okay. Uh, next meeting is going to be a special meeting on Monday. On Monday. Um, at 6 p.m. right here and it's going to be a hybrid meeting again and then the next regular meeting will be on monday april 1st um, at the rochester campus um future agenda items i think right now it's getting ready for a meeting and um and certainly getting the warrant and the budget right away um Anything else you want to add, uh, team, on uh, future agenda items? And of course, we've got the two mission statements that we're going to be doing in April, um, one for the board and one for the endowment. Um, can we have a discussion around? Not, not on Monday. Uh, no, 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 next meeting. Uh, yes. Capital improvement plan. I think we'll have a draft by then. So we'll, OK, great, yeah. great, yeah. OK. Yeah. And we're going to have a draft on uh, coming up on um, the uh, uh, communications uh, of how we attract, retain, and build social capital. So that's going to be coming as well. So some big things there. We also got some tests coming, and then the results we're going to see later in the spring. Um, Okay, we're all set. Anybody want to call for an adjournment? You want to move? I move. Okay, second somebody? Second. I second. All right. Yeah. I'll vote say yay. Okay. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to move it. Move okay. <laughs> Monday.